Hey, it's David from socialexpression.net with a video today about fear and how fear doesn't have to control you, especially irrational fear, but fear in general, we can just simplify it down to that. So let me be honest, there are many times before I make a video, I'm afraid to make the video. I'm afraid that people will like it. I'm afraid that it will suck. I'm afraid that I'll skip over my words and say um too much, which I'll do anyways. And by the way, I have music playing in the background um, because I feel like it. <laughs> so I have to identify the song, I believe. It's one of my favorite ambient songs called Bhakti by Ishk that I like to listen to when I work to create a relaxing atmosphere, whether fear is there or not. So back to the topic at hand, fear. And the fact that we can act whether or not we experience fear in our system. And actually by experiencing the fear, we can expand the capacity of our system to deal with fear. So it's not about trying to make fear go away or push it out of the system or flush it out. You know, those methods can work and do work sometimes, but on a consistent basis. It, to me, and to all the personal development I've done, what makes the most sense is to be able to expand your capacity for fear because then no matter what fear comes your way, you're able to handle it more easily and effectively and behave how you want to in accordance with your values, what you want to do in a given situation, etc. with the fear still there. You know, one of the perfect examples of this that I love and will probably use till the day I die and beat it over the head like a dead horse, I don't think I used that uh, analogy the right way, is the Navy SEALs one, where not many Navy SEALs make it through training because one of the hardest tests they have to pass is they have to overcome their fear of drowning. So they have to go into a swimming pool for 20 minutes, they start with the regulator on, and you can look up these videos on YouTube, it's pretty cool, and I think Two-thirds of the cadets drop out at this point, and some people have to take this, t this test and pass it, um, or it takes them four times to do it because it's so difficult, because it's totally rational that while you're not able to breathe underwater that, and you know that you can surface and get air, that you go, you're just gonna go. But they have to suppress and deal with that fear. So what happens is they're underwater with these respirators and the instructors come up to them, they pull the regulators off, they restrain them or they twist them up, turn them off, do all kinds of stuff to the, the seals underwater, the seals in training, so that they can't surface while they try to resolve the situation. So they do get a chance to get the regular back on, but it may not be easy and, and they have to move and continue to learn how to control their breath and their fear to not surface during that 20 minute period. It's a pretty insane test and it's actually where most seals drop out. Um, Pardon me, I have an itchy nose. Uh, clearly, I don't have a fear of itching my nose on camera. Um, so, when it comes to fear, they're learning to deal with the fear and not behave in a way that they need to surface to get air. So, how do we relate that to social anxiety? Well, when you have that social fear, part of the process, we can do lots of internal work, but there's no avoiding exposing ourselves to our fear in social situations. So when we go to the situation, we hang out, we be with the fear, we acknowledge the fear, we label the fear. We, we say, here's my social anxiety story cropping up, the irrational fear. I experience it, yet I'm still going to make eye contact with that person. I'm still gonna smile, I'm still gonna acknowledge or engage that person, say hi, or I'm still just gonna stay here and be. Um, in this social situation, not run away and leave. So we're ex, you know, ex, practicing expanding our system with that social fear when it comes up. That's what we do when we do exposure. Now sometimes we, that fear and we just can't help it, we have to leave and our system kind of collapses on itself. And when the system collapses, that's when you know, we go away or we do some avoidance behavior or maybe we check our phone, check the cell phone too much or uh, talk too much, you know, or over talk. Some pe sometimes people do when they feel social anxiety, more of a rare symptom. So, or behavior. So, 
I think it's really important to learn how to be with fear and that it's not a bad experience, it's just the experience you're currently having, not to label it, oh, this fear is bad. And that's why we run away from it. We're like, I need to get away from this fear, it's bad. Well, it's not bad, it's just the fear that you have in that moment. So this isn't, this isn't easy stuff to learn if this is the first time you're hearing about it, okay? This, is, this takes work. And you know that's what I teach in Dissolve Social Anxiety Home Recovery Program. That's what anybody who is teaching or giving you therapy or coaching that's worth its weight in salt is, is going to, to understand as well. It's part of the process to be with the fear. And you don't have to behave um, in accordance with your fear. And that's part of actually deconditioning the fear out. Is you, It's almost like you show yourself, hey, I, I was afraid, but I still did it anyway, so why do I have to be afraid? It's kind of this creates this new feedback loop um, that deconditions the fear, but without trying to push it away or resist the fear, which is a way to keep it in place and keep our attention on the fear instead of how we want to behave and how we want to act. So there is an amount, a certain amount of refrain that we refrain from behaving with what, the, what we think the fear is telling us to do. So in social anxiety, we feel the fear. Part of the behavior might be to freeze up. So we refrain from freezing up and we open our bodies up. We refrain from uh, always looking away when somebody looks at us. Obviously, if we looked at somebody and we looked away, it's too late. But the next time we can say, you know what? <laughs> when I feel this fear, I'm gonna do my best to make eye contact or I'm gonna do my best to stay, say hi and start a conversation with the bartender or the grocery store clerk or the, bag, the bagger guy or girl, whatever. So quickly I'm mentioning the art of refrain in here as well, refraining from obeying the fear and letting the fear control us. Um, we control the fear in a sense without trying to control it. <laughs> Again, it's the paradox of controlling without trying to control. Um, very big in the Eastern tradition, in martial arts, um, it's a great concept that once you start to understand things like effortless effort, controlling without controlling, your ability to respond grows so much and you're not reacting, you're choosing responses instead of the fear coming and you reacting to the fear. The fear is there and it gives you certain possibilities, but when you're limited by that, you don't have a wider scope. So that's why it's cool to include the fear because sometimes, mostly not in social situations, the fear gives you a certain set of possibilities. But then you have these other set of possibilities that say, well, I don't have to obey the fear. I can act with my, in accordance with my values and the story that I want to live as this person that's not controlled by social anxiety. Okay, so as always, subscribe to the channel above if you like this video. Comment below. Would like to hear what you think. And uh, go over to Social Expression. Get the free ebook, 10 Keys to Social Anxiety Recovery. Get on the list. Get my um, updates on the blog. I give a lot of free stuff, content over there. And uh, until next video, uh, I urge you to commit to overcoming your social anxiety and take that first and most difficult step. So until next time, take care. Bye.